My name is uh, Steve Devonshire, I'm, I'm a uh, training manager in the Global Commercial Training Department um, and um, my role involves uh, training the store staff, uh, managers and owners of the businesses. Yes, um, I, I've been with Bang & Olufsen uh, just over 39 years, actually in May this year it was 39 years, um, which has gone extremely quickly, um, but the role that I take, uh, you're right, in fundamentally, um, I'm reflecting the voice, as it were, of a lot of people that stand behind the products when they're being developed and being produced. So I get the, to meet and talk to the designers, the engineers, and so on. Uh, and in the training department, we try and bring that down to a communication uh, for our salespeople, uh, to the customer, about the ideas, uh, concepts behind the products. There's always, um, there's always stories behind the products that are important to tell. Yeah, very much so. I would say we often say that selling Bang & Olufsen is telling Bang & Olufsen. And I think uh, we still have a place in a market where, where technology is very dominant. Um, technology today can almost do everything. And yet, um, for a lot of people, it's, it's more about what it does for them. So we've put a lot of focus on the customers. Um, and the, those customers that are interested in a product like Bang & Olufsen uh, need, need a reason to buy. Uh, nobody just spends a, a lot of money on a product without some justification. So we, we spend time obviously in terms of the technology which is important to, to, um, to know that, that what we're delivering is not just aesthetics, it's not just uh, beautiful aluminium and wood and so on, actually beneath that level uh, we're, we're delivering the best technology that we can as well and I think it's, a, it's the blend of those things that become important in the buying process. So in, in that process it's important that our salespeople in the stores understand that conceptually. We're not, fundamentally we're not selling electronics, we, we are, but, but there's more to it than that. If you were just in the market to buy a television uh, then you would never buy Bang & Olufsen. In the same way, if you were just in the market to buy a watch or a car, you would never buy, let's say, a Rolex or a BMW. Uh, you can buy very, very well-functioning products. Uh, the, there's an emotional content that I think that's important to understand in our business. I think that when, when we start off, let me give you an example of the television that we're, we're launching now. Internally, uh, we, we have uh, some commercial needs, obviously commercial needs to produce a certain type of product in the TV, for example, certain screen sizes, uh, using the latest technology that we can. 
But internally, that, that journey sort of starts in, in the concept area where we start talking, uh, we give our products a lot of names, internal names, nicknames. Uh, and we started talking about the storyteller television. And, um, we sort of know what we, what we mean internally when we say that. But, uh, and, and it needs an explanation externally to say the idea behind a, a good storyteller, and if you can go back to maybe when your father or your grandfather would tell a story, there, there was a process, there's, a, there's, a, um, there's an element of getting your attention and, and it's about sitting down and preparing yourself. Is everybody sitting comfortably? Then we start the story and there's something in the, in the voice and the way the story is told. Good storytellers uh, capture the attention and as a child, you can be lost in the story, you can be Peter Pan or you know you can fly or whatever it is that and it was that sort of concept that we wanted to make a product that was just so capturing in the picture quality and the sound quality that you could suspend belief almost on a rainy uh, Tuesday evening uh, when you were watching uh, a, t a television a movie or a program on TV and, and that's where we sort of start that process where, of course, any television will give you a great picture today. Uh, the technology that's available to all manufacturers will deliver at a very high level. Sound-wise, this is where, of course, one of our strengths comes in. Um, that's where the emotional content comes into any viewing experience, a movie or a TV program. The producers know this very well. They put a big focus on uh, on on the sounds that are associated with their, their productions. Um, and, and we wanted to build a television that would do that, that would, would of course, would be a pleasure to own, uh, uh, hopefully aesthetically a pleasure to view, but when you turn it on, uh, you sort of forget everything else. Now you're in, in the movie or you're in the story that's being told. And I think that, that blend of find the very finest components that we can, the best sound that we can produce, uh, the best design and aesthetics craftsmanship really comes to, in a way, to what makes a Bang & Olsen product different to anybody else's. I think, well, first thing, I've been very lucky to, to um, find myself in this position. Uh, I am... Um, in the role where it's, it's fundamentally it's a training role but I've connected to so many parts of the company and we are a small company and that's another advantage but when we're in that process of course there there are some very serious commercial decisions made uh, as we start to develop a product and we work with designers external designers we don't employ designers and haven't done for many many years because we, we find it um, really useful that they work in designing furniture or, or fashion or buildings, uh, all sorts of different things that they do. But when they come to us and work with us and they bring an idea, we have somebody called a concept developer who sits between the external designer and our design engineers. And, and we talk about the concept developer, he's sort of the oil in the engine, without him things would, could grind to a halt, you know, he, he carries a big responsibility. Also on a commercial side, the way he communicates with, with our senior management for budget items and so on and so forth. There's, there's always a focus, so there's a price at the end of the day that, that's a viable price and we, we need to keep that in mind. But what starts to happen is that the designer will come uh, with an idea, a fresh idea, uh, and if it meets our, let's say, our commercial needs, it's something that, that is interesting in, from a commercial point of view, uh, then we start to work with the engineers, the concept developer, and typically the designer will always push the engineers. The, the engineers, we, we've got some great uh, development engineers, I have to say, know this process very well, but there's a sort of creative friction that starts to take place between the engineer and actually um, in the development and in our factories uh, they're also part of that process because often um, the, the designer will, will want a shape or a, a surface or, or something that, that we've never done before. Almost every product that we make uh, we're, we're 
we're redesigning the way that we make them. So the, the factory, the process is a very fundamental part of all that as well. And, and that sort of creative friction, uh, again, is what I think basically makes a Bang & Olufsen product. So yes, there's, um, there's always a commercial aspect to this. It's a, of course, it's a, it's a business, of course it is. And we have uh, investors and shareholders uh, to report to. But making a, a, a product that will sit in the market today uh, and compete with the very finest technology in the world, people that are presenting themselves with the very finest technology, we have to have that other part of that uh, story to tell people. Um, and our, I suppose you could say our luxury, um, I'm not quite sure that we're a luxury brand in the sense that um, people just buy it the same way they might buy a Louis Vuitton handbag, for example. Um, but our luxury comes in that area, I think, in producing products that people can connect to, understand the concepts and, and want to choose something uh, beautiful but actually delivers fundamentally on the technology as well. But that, that, I think, is very much where our design engineers really play a big part, because they 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 know more than a designer um, exactly what you might say is physically possible. But they also know that the designer will challenge them. They'll they'll find solutions, and and as I mentioned, almost every product we make, there's something new and different about it. So. If we're talking, if I was talking about this latest television, the, the B-Vision uh, Harmony that we're about to launch, you know, the way that the loudspeakers move, that I, I can imagine exactly the designer saying, I, you know, I want uh, these oblong shapes to turn. Well, if you put two oblong shapes side by side and simply turn them, then the bottom corners hit each other. Uh, and that's a fundamental uh, physical problem. So our engineers, uh, design a system whereby uh, we actually move the uh, the speakers apart a little bit, turn it, and as we start to turn it, we move them back together. Now they do it in a way that I would challenge anybody to see it. Um, I have to point it out to people, and I've challenged people to say, "So can you see it?" No, you have to stand in one place, looking sort of downwards to see and look very carefully to see this movement. But that's another good example, I think. Um, it becomes out for us as a world patent. Nobody's ever done it before, and most people, I think, would say, "Yeah, it's just too difficult." You know, from the starting point, um, and it would cost too much. But we have a, a legacy, I think, of uh, very strong engineers uh, who take these challenges. It's one reason they work for Bang and Olufsen because for them, this is the fun in their business. Um, my fun might be different when I'm looking at a product, but they see those challenges as very much part of the fun of their job. Well, if we take this television as a, as a good example um, of where we are today, then then our focus, our areas of expertise, I would say, are the, are the three things I mentioned earlier, basically, was sound, uh, craftsmanship, and design. Um, having already said, I don't think there's much, as, as good as we've been in picture technology, that we could do to improve uh, the technology that LG have today. By marrying the two together, uh, and the focus being uh, on picture and sound uh, together, then, Imagine you own this television and say a couple of years from now, maybe the generations of that screen has moved uh, to an extent that you might see some benefit in changing the screen. And yet the whole uh, design interoperability uh, and, and so on uh, would, could remain the same if you're still uh, in love with your Beavision Harmony. So we can actually swap out that screen uh, in two years, let's say, maintain the sound part, the operation part, the integration part, um, and, and then just jump, as it were, something we couldn't do before, into the latest technology. So there's no built-in obsolescence in this way. In terms of the sound center and the operation, 
Um, then, then of course we can update, uh, um, physically we can update that sound centre, but great sound stays the same. Uh, and fundamentally the great operation also stays the same. Maybe there are different things you want to connect, but for us that's a simple thing to, to really take care of. It's a software update that we can handle. So, so the, I, I see some strong advantages in, in that for the customer in the end of the day. Yes, the, the idea, the, the, if I come back to this storyteller idea of this television, um, and fundamentally, you know, the picture and sound being so engaging that you, you're drawn into that process. That, of course, is when we're talking about when you're using the Beer Vision Harmony. Part of the concept when we started d dealing with this, in, in particularly in the bigger screen sizes, is what happens with the screen um, when you're not using it. And, and one of the disadvantages you could say today of large screens are uh, they're just a big, big black uh, rectangle on a wall when they're not being used. And, and there's some nice ideas of maybe you'd have works of art on there and, or, or people are, some uh, brands are trying to make them disappear um, to look like something else until you switch them on. Um, and, and never, we've not quite got there yet, and maybe we will in a few years uh, do something like that. So we're, we're tapping into um, a heritage again, I suppose, a history whereby, if I go back to our very first television, 1952, and I said we, we give nicknames to uh, our products, that television was called the Wheelbarrow. It was our very first TV, by the way, it had six loudspeakers in it back in 1952 when when the sound would be very ordinary I have to say but but we always focused on sound being more on the half the picture right back to those days um, it was called a wheelbarrow so it was a beautiful wooden cabinet it had a cover that for the screen when you were not watching it but this cabinet had two wheels on the back and it also had two handles that you could pull out of the cabinet and of course now you know why it was called a wheelbarrow uh, back in 1952 in Denmark, there was about 90 minutes transmission. So the idea was that you could literally wheel out your TV, enjoy the experience for an hour and a half, close it up and then put it out of the way. Um, conceptually, this, this television has a red thread all the way back to that. So what we're trying to do here is create a, uh, a television that, that has more of a furniture feel, a bit like these old cabinets. And some, of, some people might remember, even in the 60s, 70s and 80s, we had televisions uh, that were built in cabinets with doors, beautiful wooden cabinets and so on. Um, with a 77-inch screen, it's a little more difficult. Um, so here, we're using the, the wood and aluminium, the beautiful speaker covers, so when the television is off, it sort of sits low in the room, uh, a lot of wood and aluminium to give it a more furniture effect. Uh, and then when you turn it on, up it comes, the speakers rotate, um, and then you're in the best viewing and listening position to, to uh, enjoy the, the uh, experience. You switch it off, and then it will go back and revert to its best shall I say, sculptured position for the room. So there's, there's um, a connection there with the technology, but also the, pe the way people want to live, we believe, with uh, technology today. Technology should just work, and it should be there, but not dominate, and, and it's difficult with a large screen. What do you do with a, a large screen? You put it on the wall, fundamentally. Um, and then when it's switched off, yeah, it's just a, a shape on the wall. So we're trying to address some of those uh, issues uh, of how people live with technology. I am very excited, but I have to say that when we launch a new product, um, my my engineering colleagues never fail to surprise me and wow me with the things that they do. Uh, and often, oft times, somebody has to point out some of the things that are happening. And you described 
with that system, you know, with the doors that open magically. Um, there's something in the, 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 the mechanical movements that we put into our products that, that humanize those products. I love the fact that when, um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have to say to me the name of that product you owned back in the 90s. What you would do is go like this. You would move, uh, and, and people, when they describe a Bang Olufsen problem, they start to say this sort of thing. You know, their arms move, so they've forgotten the name of the product or whatever, but they'll never forget what that emotional content is. Um, if, uh, normally in hi fi or TV, you, you might say how many HDMI sockets it's got, or, you know, um, it, it sits on a piece of furniture or something. But there's that animation that comes in with Bang Olufsen, and I think we've delivered my colleagues have delivered again on this one um, and I love demonstrating these products because I, um, I mentioned being lucky, I am very lucky because I, I become the voice of these very clever people who are right back at the beginning of the design uh, and, and I have the advantage of taking the best of that and then trying to make it a story that, that, that people can, uh, can associate with or, or connect to. And I'll just love to see pe people's faces when uh, when we turn this thing on and it rises beautifully. And people talk about the butterfly uh, effect of the opening and so on. Actually, actually the inspiration for that opening was uh, there's, there's a, uh, some gardens in Copenhagen called Tivoli Gardens, beautiful area, and it's full of entertainment. And there is a pantomime theatre there. And in the theatre, the curtains are actually a peacock. And when, this, when the show starts, the peacock's feathers go down and then at the end of the show they come up. That actually was the inspiration for the design. It's things like those that, that become, yeah, what I call a very bang-on-awesome product.